You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Detlef Schlich and today we dive into the unexpected and um, creative um, ocean of the creative mind. I mean, I say that so often, I still can't. <laughs> uh, together with with uh, Stu- Stuart Wilde, um, a musician uh, from now nowadays from West Cork, uh, earlier from close to Dublin, and uh, I'm very happy to have Stuart here. Uh, hi, Stu. Hey, Ted. It's nice to be here. It's great. We have already two parts, and uh, we had in the second part we talked about um, the influence of music of Stuart's, Stuart's music um, because his mother was playing. Uh, songs from Simon and Garfunkel and Beatles and so on. It was quite nice. And uh, I would like to continue somehow with this. Now, um, <coughs> um, regarding influences of music and what what's uh, driven engine, uh, what's, where is the driven engine in, in why, why are we going to make mu- music or getting creative and so on. And Stuart, he went to, uh, with 13 to uh, a concert from punk bands uh one of those punk bands was was uh, therapy and other punk bands very hardcore what was it hardcore punk um well there probably wasn't much punk around in those days to be honest uh i was like li- listening retrospectively to the punk music you know that was in the 80s actually then yeah but uh around dublin yeah, but so it, was, it had passed. Really, the punk scene had really passed by the time uh, I I got to it, you know. But um, it had an influence on me all the same. And then, like I'd said before, um, my taste became uh, broader, and um, rediscovered the Beatles, and then uh, other bands uh, from like earlier like uh pink floyd for example yeah and um all kinds of things uh can't think of them all now but you know <laughs> beck i really liked uh later beck, yeah that, that yeah. was quite later i mean i, I still I, yeah. I, I was wondering so just to explain our listeners how it was in the 80s i can imagine this is very interesting that the punk bands they still used to play in and pups and uh, they came over from england probably sure i would have missed it though i would have been too young for that and and they, they played in pups in 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 in, in the surroundings in ireland just in order to 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 get practice for 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 the bigger stages as well that i don't know i can't say so so no so, so i can't imagine that so yeah so beck was already in the 90s yeah or? yeah yeah. So he used to work a lot with samples. Yeah, he um, he did. Um, so so back back is the one. I mean, what I know the song. What is it? Loser baby. No? It's, yeah, it's that was his first big hit. Right. Um, well. Yeah, he was great. I mean, the whole that period of time for me was amazing for music. It was uh, it was very uh, creative, alternative. Nineties. Yeah, it was when. Alternative music was pop music, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had bands like uh, like Nirvana, obviously very, very oh, popular. Um, but grunge. Yeah, and like, but the grunge scene in itself was not uh, was not typecast. You know, it was like you had a lot of different bands in there doing. Sure, Pro Jam. And, yeah, and Soundgarden and things like that going on. Soundgarden, sure. And, yeah. And it was all uh, it was all very interesting. 
That was yeah. a great area, but but I think your 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 sounds they're not so much influenced by by hard rock and that, isn't it? Mm. I mean, uh, yeah, but who's to say? Well, uh, I mean, I think influence and inspiration come uh, from sometimes odd places, do you know, sure. and then when they're filtered through your own psyche and your own comes uh, something new out of it, y your eyes and your ears that yeah becomes something different, and then it's uh, it. It then the people you work with maybe uh, have their own influences, and so it all comes together and brings it's, something. Which is nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, in, in, in the best case scenario, <coughs> something happens what, uh, what what nobody expects, and and yeah. where 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 we're gonna say, "Wow, so this is a piece. It is so amazing. I really love it." I mean, but this process. Uh, and here we come really to 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 the creative mind it's sometimes very much a torture as well it can be a torture like what you hear so far make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now this podcast is made possible by listeners like you thank you for your support now back to the show how often, how often did, did we write songs and play it and said oh, it's shit and uh, sure yeah i mean God, um, the amount of songs I've written that you know I've never played in public or bothered to record even because they're not uh, they haven't passed the test you know but uh, that's that's part of it so you so, know? so let's go back to the band with in, in 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 your thirteens which was already quite interesting so you guys you started the band and and uh <coughs> and Stuart he uh he uh start to play bass instead guitar because they already had two guitars in the band so so yeah. or, so you started to to learn bass with 13 yeah and then i i played in a couple of bands uh you know over over my teenage years uh, playing bass um no, nothing much happened you know there wasn't yeah. a whole lot of gigs or yeah. anything but you know did you had gigs you're, you're, with, with with 13 14 uh more like 15 16 so, that age starting about 15 i guess so but so you learned bass with 13 and and then then you practice mm, probably it's more like 14 15 14 15 yeah, yeah. and then you start yeah. with bands in when it was 15 yeah lo local stuff you know um, oh, nothing yeah nothing happened yeah that's great um, too much but it, it was for us it was it was great and it was we weren't into sports so um it was something to do you know on a saturday you know the evenings you know so it's all it's always I, I you know i think i think in our society uh success is measured uh usually in financial terms yeah. and i think as artists we we were familiar with that but we're also uh, with the pressure of that but also familiar with the uh with the reality that success comes in different forms and like maybe sure. personal success sure. has got nothing to do with money sure. and well, i think I anyone mean, involved in an artistic sure. I mean, you, pursuit you, you, uh, you knows like me. that we both are not materialists you know no and 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 uh and, and we know that 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 we can't reach normally success with 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 i mean it, it helps to have some money in your pocket because you can make projects sure yeah you know? and, yeah and that's 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 uh that's difficult enough but yeah i mean getting getting a thing together even if it's a song or 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 a good painting i mean i must have to admit i didn't paint for a while uh, but whatever i mean nowadays the expression of art is so huge sure M making uh, a good dinner can be an expression oh uh, yes uh, and uh, an artistic endeavor that you can feel successful about it doesn't have to have financial return but you're right we do need uh, as artists we also need money to progress with our art uh, so that's the that's the catch so to, to what would be nice isn't yeah. it and i mean uh, the uh, the way to the top that's the thing is and i think that's the reason why we artists are as well human in general are struggle sometimes because uh um competition and 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 cooperation is so close together that 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 we sometimes yeah. getting a little bit lost you know with this feeling you know, because we want to be good 
But then, then in this elbow society, where uh, nowadays everyone is getting higher if, if he has a if he has a good a stiff elbow, you know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but then there's there there's uh, there's kind of uh, like positive uh, uh, things to competition as well between between artists that can you can drive each other on so you it's not necessarily a destructive thing to be in competition do you know yeah it's not always easy to find that kind of competition but you know it's more more likely you'll find uh, um, the kind of competition you're talking about but uh, it can be good too it can be good it can drive you on you know I still I still try to to um to understand that i mean i understand it somehow but but uh understand it on a way like like that it doesn't make you more more bitter you know and and more disappointed uh, well, yeah. and life in general can make you bitter and cynical along the way that we all all, all have to try <laughs> to avoid that yeah 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 we oh god guys you know but it's great so so you guys it's great that, that you already started then with 16 getting getting some practice in, in, in sure yeah it was practice in right, in, so. in pubs yeah probably in on and on, on, on couple little, of little gigs yeah family fairs and 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 all that you know so. not a whole lot not a whole lot i was uh then i moved to dublin there was a bit more but not a whole lot and then i decided actually it was i wanted to focus on on the guitar and, yeah. uh, and yeah. singing and uh, that and songwriting but um i was very shy and uh, in so, your 20s yeah, yeah so i was i i was in my 30s before i ever sang in public yeah you know yeah. and uh so i haven't been doing it that long really yeah no i mean i can't imagine that i started as well very late with 23 24 to to build up somehow my self-esteem as mm. artist e either as yeah. a singer or as as a painter or whatever well, it, you know? it, it can be terrifying to uh reveal yourself in public if uh if you're a bit on the shy side i mean some people are born exhibitionists and they uh they transition into that quite easily yeah and um, not everyone yeah does you know you know what on this note so, so i gonna i gonna i gonna Put the candle on. on oh, very on, nice touch, Dad. On nice this touch. this subject, I mean, I w it's it's already a, a post post candle light, a Christmas post candle light candle. This is this is yeah. I mean, I mean, it is. Uh, so, so you in in your twenties, you probably you 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 worked your ass off then 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 as a stage monkey and, and yeah, I was working. Um, I had uh, I had uh, a young daughter as well, as well. Yeah, okay. and um, yeah, it's life. But you know, I mean, I think there's something about uh, when you're if you're a writer, yeah, you you need something, you need some experience to write about. I think it can sure. You know, I sure. mean, when did you start to, to write? Relate to, you know, I mean, I was always writing since I'm a teenager, writing songs. But the the things I wrote as a teenager yeah. are, you know, they're, normal. Yeah, they're, you know, that's normal. That's that's that's, that's they that's, weren't great. Oh uh, yeah, but but it's good. They, to it's some things have potential, but they're not uh, fully realized. Very good practice. Uh, I think you really do need those years behind you of a bit of struggle and a bit of heartache, things like that, before you can actually put the feeling and the emotion into your work you know so um so yeah there's no rush no no, no rush no true so no no I, I agree completely i mean i started like i say in my 20s was was a punk rock band and uh and uh for me it was as well somehow very 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 Double binding somehow going on the stage, you know, on one way you like it, mm. and on the other way you 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 dislike it. You you this adrenaline and everything which comes together is. I think there's good adrenaline and bad adrenaline though, and is, I think yeah. um, the adrenaline I get from being on stage Excuse me. Yeah. is uh, is what I would call good adrenaline because afterwards I feel amazing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, no. I, I, I feel agree. great, I, I like, agree. and it lasts. Whereas uh, yeah. bad adrenaline be more like, 
if you nearly get like into a car accident or something uh, or you get into oh, a, somebody, a, a, some, an some, argument with somebody on the street or something and some, you, you're pumped but like I don't feel good after that I'm, I'm shaking and I feel really tense and it, it takes a long time to go away so I don't yeah. I don't like that kind of adrenaline no. I'm not sure science, I'm no scientist so I don't know what the difference is it but, could be psychological uh, I have no idea I don't know now but, but uh, yeah I'm not starting now to 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 dig into that too deep no, because no. then then we 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 uh we come totally into a different subject you know so hmm. uh so so, so it's a probably so you 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 uh, practice your guitar playing in the in the 20s yeah i was at home i was living i was you know i'd moved down to west cork at some point um you know you know, you're learning to drive. You're working at this. You're working at yeah. that, making ends meet. So it's just like, yeah. you know. And you you practice your songwriting in the twenties as well. Sure, I was I was writing songs all along. Um, uh, you know, there's not not many of them survived uh, in my in my head. I don't remember. There's a couple of them that like were good enough to stick around, but um, you know, it got more interesting than later on. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. In your thirties. Yeah, just yeah. Around the time I was thirty, I decided I was going to give it a proper go again because I had kind of ignored it for a long time. Like you know. So you made. And I thought like that. I actually should challenge myself and do yeah. something that scares me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, that was um, singing in front of people, uh, which was a, a big jump for me. But once I did it, and once I got over the hump of it. I I was fine. Mm. I I um I started to love it then. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you're probably not alone. I mean, I bet with you that 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 uh, a lot of listeners who, who are in in uh, perform or in in the, in the music scene they they know exactly where 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 you're coming from. Like myself as well. You know. I mean. Uh, sure sure but it is it is still brave i mean it's still brave to go on a stage and and sure. and, 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 and doing things well is, you know. say, like playing and singing in front of people or doing anything artistic in front of people is completely different than yeah. doing it at home in your bedroom or whatever yeah but though i have to say and and that's an advice for me for every artist for every creative people person you know so it is uh, if you're creative try to achieve it you know because if you really rehearse whatever, is it a painting or, 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 or a play or a poem? And if you just stick at home, it is nice and it is a great experience for yourself. But I think to to have a discourse with other humans, with an audience, gives your work a completely a different uh, value and makes mm. it stronger somehow. You well, know? well, for good and bad, it does that. Uh, like sometimes I've had the experience where what I've what I thought I was doing at home doesn't translate to an audience and uh, I have to rethink the work uh, after I played it first you know yeah. so like that very first time you sing a song you've written uh, to a live audience yeah uh, that's a that's always a, a difficult moment for me so how was your first gig oh it's terrifying I um I did it up in Cork City all right in the where? round in the roundy Around Up, upstairs in the roundy okay. and um how many people oh i guess i'm guessing there was like maybe 40 people i'm not sure all right this is quite a lot for for a first gig well i was i was opening up for somebody uh for francesca baines a friend of mine she also uh, is from west cork just jessica baines do it francesca I know her. Yeah, yeah 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 cool and that and that was um I couldn't tell you the actual date, but I'm guessing 2009, maybe. 2009. So we speak just about about 10, 11, 12 years. Something like that, yeah. Wow. It could have been 2007, but I'm thinking to 2009. Yeah, never, head, never mind. Sure. Never mind about I probably one got of the, it. That was the time when when I when I came to Ballet de Hop more than last 2008. Wow. Well, it was. Uh, it, it it was interesting. I ended up with this really shitty mic microphone stand because yeah. um, there was a lot of musicians that were playing with Francesca, and uh, 
there was there wasn't like much left. Uh, Francesca yeah. Baines, not Jessica Baines. Yeah, Francesca. Yeah, but, but you know you you said Jessica. Too, no, so. I said Francesca. Did you? Yeah. Definitely. I will. Okay, <laughs> okay, maybe 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 uh, my ear sight is already good. Your ear sight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're wearing ear goggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, the microphone stand was a bit dodgy. Yeah. And uh, I, I was playing, I started off with this song that had, had some stops in it along the way. And um, it kept uh, kept falling over slowly. Uh, yeah, so no. I, I had to follow it down, you know, like follow it down. That, that was, was a good falling. performance. And then every time I got to the stop, I'd yeah. be half bent over and then I'd I straighten it back up again and start singing, and the thing it kept happening. So yeah. everyone was laughing anyway because it was it was funny. So it was a little bit like free jazz dancing. Well, it was just <laughs> it was just comedy, you know. Uh, so it was kind of good in a way that yeah. I started the, my very first gig was uh, uh, had a, a comedic element to it because that ice was broken, and then it's like oh, I can't get much worse, you know. So yeah. like, and I could see the funny side of it, and, you know. <laughs> so that was my first gig. Wouldn't say I was um, uh, very happy with my performance or anything, but um, so how long was your first gig? So, so oh, I'm it, guessing it was thirty minutes or forty. So you had a cap couple of songs together, and yeah, and probably like I probably did ten songs or something. You know? Good, okay. So so and all all my well, own stuff. I didn't used to ever do covers in those days. It's so already quite a lot, I would say. So. Uh, so you and and then and then you yeah sure so then you continued. I mean now you have already two or three three uh, albums out. Don't well, you? I've two albums out, and then I'm I'm still trying to finish off the third one. It's taken me quite a long time. But um, so, so the third, when did you start with the third one? Oh, I started and and scrapped it and started a couple of times uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I was trying to get a band to um, to work the songs and get it the way I wanted it, and then. In the last uh, few months, or maybe it's a year, maybe I actually start started some demos like this time last year, and um, that's shaping up into an album, and that will I'll, that will come out at some point. I just just getting to the finishing parts. It's hard to get the just get it right. Ah, yeah, I know. I know Especially you when you're working on your own and you're yeah. doing everything. Yourself, so you're gonna you know? work on your own. You don't have a band with you, or what? No, not not uh, not on this. No. So um, what what is it? How, what's about drums and and bass and well, things like this? I mean, basically, uh, probably on yourself. I I I started off working with some drum loops, so I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep those drum loops or if I'm going to. So it uh, goes a little bit more in a dance direction. Yeah, ish. maybe ish. Not really. Yeah. Which, um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm try. I have to decide uh, soon whether or not I'm going to put live drums on sure. or if I'm just going to go with. The sure. way it is. So then I put uh, guitars and bass and harmonica and uh, vocals, uh, backing vocals, and all that. So, so you do all the backing vocals on your own? Yeah, except for those one, one or two songs. I had some uh, some friends come in. Yeah. Um, which I'm hoping to get a bit more of that. I because uh, I'd say yeah, I'm kind of I'd like to have. Uh, more musicians on it than just me. <laughs> yeah, it depends. I mean, if it works, it's it's true. If it works, it works. It's 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 good, isn't it? So, so that, I mean, that 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 sounds great. So, after your 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 first your first gig, then you I mean, now in the last nine years, you you played huge lots in, around mm. around yeah, this yeah. area. Yeah, basically uh, in 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 Cork and Kerry or yeah, Cork and Kerry. And um, County Waterford, um, yeah, I suppose just the, the bottom of the country. And 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 you had as well. Um, you used to play in Germany. I did a couple of times. I went over already a couple of times. I didn't know yeah, that twice. Uh, twice. Yeah, I uh, my first album, uh, The Black Crow. Uh, when I made that, I was working with uh, a German uh, violin player All called right. Catherine Doner. I've who, heard about her. Yeah, yeah. She was living in Cork at the time. All right. And then she, uh, so we were gigging together a lot for for a few years. And when she moved then back to Germany, yeah, um, she organized a couple of gigs here and there. Where? Uh, there was um, 
Schwäbisch Hall. Schwäbisch Hall, ja. Ja. Ja, ja, Schwabenland, ja. Yeah, so, so. um, then we went down to the Culture Fest, who's down by the big lake, uh, Lake Constance. Okay. Um, we went down, it was a busking festival, so we, we spent a bit of time there. All right. I was another couple of gigs around. Um, can't remember the venues. And uh, then when I came back, uh, the second time she was living in Tübingen, so we did, we kind of sent Tübingen, yeah. Yeah, we sent yeah. around there and kind of moved out from there. Yeah. That was fun. I, I liked playing in Germany. That's yeah, great. We had it already, so, so so that that the audience is very thankful you know, if people from Ireland come, and I can imagine that that your stuff they they love it. You know, they really, it's uh, it, it they, they really really pay attention, you know. Um, and uh, whereas in Ireland, I think you kind of learn to win a crowd over because they can be enjoying it, but they're still yeah. kind of out and they want to have a chat with their mates, and you kind of get used to that. So it's kind of unnerving. When you go to somewhere else and they are actually listening uh, from I know, the Rico, I know. and you don't have to win them, they're already they're already yeah. invested. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, quite yeah. different. It's good. Uh, yeah. There's uh, it's good things about both ways, I suppose. It's good. I mean, and I think as well, if if you're gonna play in Ireland or in West Cork, if you're gonna play again and again and again in the same pub. People don't, don't appreciate it anymore, like like at the beginning, because it's more, it's more than one drift more into this this discover bands thing that people say, oh yeah, it's him, and and then it ring and, and yeah. You know. Yeah, well, that's uh, I mean that's uh, I mean that's one of the jobs you it you is, end up yeah. doing as a musician uh, in Ireland is it, that it is. a lot of the jobs available are pubs. I I think you know. what what would be maybe nice is if because if an if if a promoter or whatever is, is now listen listening to this podcast and uh, to 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 your stuff and uh, we might play maybe one song of you um, in a minute. Uh, what would you say when 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 uh, when when somebody would come a promoter or whatever and say hey look so, so I love your stuff. Uh, do you want to do gigging in in Germany ten tours fifteen tours? Yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So, so dear listeners, if any <laughs> any promoter or, or whatever is is here on board and a steward is available, actually for 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 touring around the world, you know. Well, I don't think there's much touring going on at the moment with the COVID. <laughs> uh, All right, no, that's true. So. But yeah, but keep it in mind, dear folks. Uh, you you will have a, a very good performer. He's actually. Uh, I saw one gig from Stuart, uh, of Stuart. Uh, Where was like, that? Uh, I think it was in the Bally Hop Social Club. Oh, it's going back a while, yeah. And it was going back a while. And, and with, with, as well, with, with all this, this one-man band things. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, uh, so you do the one-man band thing very well as well, don't you? Yeah, so it's, I, I kind of like doing that. Yeah, I get to make a bit of noise. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's great. It's really great. Cool. I would say, I mean, we're almost at the end of our three-part show, and it was great to have you here. Oh, it's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure. Well, it was really cool. Um, we have almost now we can play actually a song into into almost into the new year. So, which song? Which song uh, do you want to play? Um, I think I'm. I'm thinking I'm. I'm going to play a song. Uh, it's off my second album, and it's called. We will be in love again. We will be in love again. Yes, for all the lost lovers out there. All right. And do you want to add anything else to to at the end? Uh, uh, what What you want to say to? Or no, just thanks for listening, and uh, hope you're all well. And that's about it. Yeah, I hope I can I can join in into the choir somehow. Is is it? We will be in love again. Yeah. Well, he's, you'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, We Will Be In Love Again, a song written by Stuart Wilde, and um, you can find it on his second album. You can find everything. It's on, on Bandcamp, actually. It's a great, Bandcamp is a great place for independent artists. Yeah, you see, um, it's on Bandcamp as well. It is, um, you can find it. As well, uh, you, uh, I put the links uh, into my 
description. no place that I'd rather be than in your arms well, I remember clearly when we fell in love we were not strangers then so don't be strange Tonight We only use the past to learn We never see the light Good night Good night, my friend Good night When 
we've climbed above ourselves. We'll be in love again. We'll. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thanks for having me on the show. It was great to have you here. Happy New Year to everyone. And we will be in love again. Bye bye. 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 This is a listener supported show. I feel honored if you subscribe to the show. You can follow me non financial with a following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link below. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in this Sunday for the third part of this Attitude Audio Triptych. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Attitude Podcast account. Eventually, I would like to thank through this medium all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world just to remember myself that without you this year couldn't and wouldn't happen You have listened to Artitude, West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. Artitude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.